It's important to choose your focal point before you start your painting because that directs your painting. It tells you what decisions you need to make, what to de-emphasize, what to leave out, where to add extra color excitement or contrast. At least 50% of paintings don't have a focal point. It is such an easy change for an artist to make to improve their painting. The example painting today by one of my students in my online course found at paintwithtricia.com is a, is a great example of what difference choosing the focal point can make. I'm gonna show you the same subject matter, but with two different focal points. Let's look at the reference photo and at the painting. The artist said that she wanted the water lilies to be the focal point. Really, it turned out to be the highlight on the lake in the back. We're gonna talk about what she could do to change that. Looking at the reference photo, where does your eye go? Where does it end up? I'm gonna guess that it ends up at that highlight across the lake. Why is that? It's because that is the lightest light against a really dark reflection from the trees and contrast will grab your eye. If I were going to paint this with the focal point that is suggested by the reference photo. Here are some changes that I would make to the painting that was sent in. Much like the reference photo, it has bands of shapes that are horizontal and they're not interrupted with any verticals. So what the, this does is it acts like a conveyor belt. Once your eye gets on there, it goes off to the side. And then it tries again, it goes off to the side. We want people to be able to travel up as well as to the side. So what can we do about that? Well, if we can break some of the edges or soften some of those edges so that it's easier for the eye to move between the shapes, that would help. Since in this example, I want the uh, highlight on the lake to be the focal point, I'm going to de-emphasize the flowers in the front. They're gonna be there, but we're gonna be able to move through them. And what I did is I made it much more marshy right there with you know the reeds coming out of the water. I also extended some of those water lilies that makes like a little curve and points to the place that I'm gonna choose for the focal point. So looking at the painter's painting, the highlight on the lake is the same color all the way across. It does change in, in the uh, photograph. It goes from very light on the right side and, and bluer on the left. But in this case, since I want the focal point to be at the, at the opening in the trees over on that side, I'm going to change the way the, the highlight and the color change. If you use a gradient, that actually moves the eye. Think of it like a crescendo in music. Builds, builds, builds to the lightest pretty blue right there. The trees in the back look a bit repetitive. What if we break them up? I've added a space and added a sky hole. So that area becomes a little more interesting and less predictable. the second scenario where we choose a focal point of the water lilies instead of the highlight on the back of the lake. Well, the first thing that we have to do is we have to deal with the highlight on the lake stealing our attention. One way is we could just take it out. You know, if you took this picture 30 minutes later, maybe that highlight wouldn't have been there at all. We can take it out or we can de-emphasize it, whichever you prefer. I'm gonna have the, the flowers build to a clump of flowers that have the lightest light, maybe some saturated color. And notice too, I put some bluer color to the water around the focal point. The land that was in the back lowered the value on that, lowered the color intensity on that because we don't need them to look there.
Now compare the two paintings and you can see that they turn out completely differently when you choose different focal points.